Hello, this is Carlton Doe from IBM. We're joined by Sunil from the HCL Informix Development Team. And in today's uh, IIEG technical uh, deep dive um, chat with the lab session, we're going to dis we are going to discuss security, uh, GSKit, OpenSSL, and other security enhancements to Informix version 14.10. As a reminder, uh, this session is being recorded. A replay will be available later on today in the IBM community webpage. Also, there are a number of HCL development um, uh, staff who are monitoring the WebEx chat window. So if you have a message that you'd like to share or a question you'd like to ask, uh, put such as Bruce saying good morning to everyone, uh, please feel free to drop it into the chat and um, they will answer um, from there. Uh, we will be unmuting the phone lines at the end of the session so that you can ask um, uh, across the air as well. With that, I am going to uh, turn the meeting over to Sunil. So let me stop Oops. sharing this. And make Sunil the presenter. Thank you, Carl. Yeah, let me share my presentation. All right. So what we are going to talk today about is what changes we have made uh, as, part, as part of client SDK 450 XC4 W1 release, as far as OpenSSL communication uh, method. Go to the next slide. This is a standard disclaimer from IBM. That whatever we are going to mention about performance numbers and all, those are just for the sake of it. Nothing should be uh, taken. Your decision should not be based on these numbers here. This is a standard disclaimer. I'll wait here for a few seconds. Okay, so what we will be looking here today is, first thing is what is changed as far as SSL communication is concerned. Then how we are going to migrate my existing client key store, which, which is created in 4.50 FC3 or older version. Then how I'm going to create a new client key store using OpenSSL, and how am I going to create new connection manager key store? Now what has changed as far as uh, my client SDK FC4 is concerned is my SSL crypto libraries are changed. So previously, that is up to 4.50 SC3 and order, we were using IBM GSKit libraries for SSL communication. But here onwards, we are providing option of using open SSL libraries for communication. Now, question is why we should be using OpenSSL libraries instead of GSK. Now, there are a couple of benefits I will hear. GSK is IBM proprietary, and as such, it is not freely available to download and not separately available to download. So it needs a release vehicle, something like new release of IDS or client SDK to have those security fixes um, transferred or propagated to a new product. So you really don't have control over your security. Whereas open 
source libraries or open SSL libraries, those are open source libraries and the release cycle is pretty short and they are freely downloadable and you as a customer, you can download it anytime on OpenSSL site and manage your security and secure your data. Now, now we are going to see here before client SDK 450XC4 W1. Okay, all client SDK installations only used GSK. Okay. And beginning with client SDK 450XC4 W1, a standalone installation of a database client uses OpenSSL as encryption library. Whereas database client installations which are co-located with a database server installation are still using GSK libraries. So what I mean by co-located is my Informix DIR for client SDK and Informix DIR for my Informix server is pointing to same directory. Informix server is always going to use GSK for SSL communication, even in 14.10xc4w1. And in the next release of client SDK 450xc5, client SDK would be using by default the GSK as SSL libraries. And OpenSSL would be an option for customers to switch to. Now let's see what changes you will have to make. Obviously, you will have a key store, older key store, I would, I would say, when you, which, is, which you are using with 450XC3 and older. By default, it's a GSK uh, proprietary uh, format, which is .kdb most of the times. If it's the .kdb file key store, then you will have to convert it to a PKCS 12 format if you have to use it with 450 xc 4 w one But if you have a PKCS 12 key store in 450XC3, then no conversion is necessary. Again, with your every key store, there is an associated password file also called a stash file. In case of 450XC3, it is having extension .sth, but when you move to client SDK 450XC4 W1, it will be having .stl extension. Please note here that database client using server co-located client SDK installation need not change or need not go under conversion. This conversion is only to be done when you have a standalone client SDK installation. Now, what do my uh, client uh, key store contains? My client key store generally contains the CA certificates, that is certifying authority certificates for authentication of the database server during SSL handshake. The key store for connection manager also contains its user private key and matching certificate. Your key store access is always guarded by password. Database clients only read the key store but need the password to access it. So every access to key store needs a password 
So to avoid providing password for every key stored access, the password can be stored in a password file, which is called a stash file. Now, how my stashing works? The, the password is saved in an encrypted format in a password file or stash file. The encryption algorithm is secret and there is no way user can retrieve that password from stash file. Let's see what are the differences between OpenSSL and GSKIP for client SDK. GSKIP supports standard PKCS 12 format as well as proprietary CMS format. The PKCS 12 format file generally have extension .p12 and CMS format file have extension .kdb. OpenSSL uses only PKCS 12 format. Existing .kdb key stores, that is CMS key stores, need to be converted for use with OpenSSL. But if you have only PKCS 12 uh, key store, then you don't need conversion. Few more differences. The secret password encryption algorithms used with GSK and OpenSSL are different. So consequently, the stash files are also named differently in case of GSK stash file is uh, having extension .sth and OpenSSL stash file has this extension STL. So a password stash with GSKit cannot be used with OpenSSL and the password stash with OpenSSL cannot be used with GSKit. So the algorithms for encryption are separate and different and cannot be used interchangeably. OpenSSL does not know about password stashing, but CSDK does. And so, along with CSDK, a utility on K stash is provided which will create a password to be used with OpenSSL. Now, key store administration is done using the command GSK8 cap I CMD utility, which is a GSK utility. And GSK utility knows the secret password encryption algorithm and it can uh, read it from the stash file whenever it wants to access the uh, key store which is created by TSK. For OpenSSL, generally OpenSSL utility is used, but again, OpenSSL does not know about password on case stash utility is provided with um, CSDK and it, it will take care of creating a password, encrypted password form. If the password for of a GSK P12 key store is not known, but it is only stored in your in the stash file, then GSK must be used to change the password so that newer password will be known and then it can be used later on with OnCap, on K stash. This is a tricky point here. I would like to uh, 
I like you to pay attention to this particular file. So if you do not remember your uh, JSKit password, which is stored in stash file, then you may not be able to convert it to OpenSSL. So to enable that, you need to first change password for GSP key store and use the new password and provide that new password to on key stash. Now we will see what are the steps involved in migration. Again, I'll, let, I'll mention here, please note that you will have to migrate your key store only if you are standalone client SDK. If you are using co-located uh, client SDK, then you don't have to migrate anything. Here, the point is to be noted here that the OpenSSL libraries, which client SDK SC4W1 supports, need minimum version of OpenSSL libraries 1.0.x. If your client key store has the GSK proprietary format CMS that you have in .kdb extension, then this key store needs to be converted to a PKCS12 key store. As CMS format is GSK specific, you need the GSK command GSK8 cap i cmd or GSK7 cap i cmd depending on the GSK version which was bundled with your older uh, product or client. Then you will have to uh, convert it using the command mentioned here. If the password for the existing KDB key store is not known, but it's only in stash file, then use minus stashed instead of minus PW password. In any way, the password for the converted PKCS 12 key store will be as given with minus new underscore PW option. And therefore, it is known for following step. Now, next step is to create a stash file with the key store password for use with OpenSSL. So use the on case stash utility provided with CSDK and create a new password file for new key converted key store. This particular step is necessary even if you have older key store which is in PKCS 12 format. And if you don't remember your password for your GSK uh, key store, then you can use the command below, which is GSK8 cap ICMD minus EDB change PW to change the password for your key store. Now let's see how we can create a new client key store from scratch using OpenSSL. Excuse me. You have to first log into the database server machine and extract the certificate from server's PKCS 12 key store. Server's CA certificate is signed by a certifying authority. 
so you can extract it as with this command. If your server is, a, is using a self-signed certificate, then probably the command which is given first may not be a good command for you to extract. You will need to use the command below. The reason being, if it's a self-signed certificate from server, then with minus CA search option, the OpenSSL does not extract that certificate. And ultimately what you will get is an empty file. So you will have to execute the command without minus CA search if your server is using self-signed certificate. This is a tricky thing here to be noted. If server's key store is a .kdb file of CMS format, then you need to use equivalent gskit command as mentioned here to extract a certificate from key store, server's key store. Now, if your server's CMS format key store contains additional CA certificates that were used to sign the server certificate, and if you do not already have such additional certificates in a separate PM file, then you need to extract each of these CA certificates with a command like mentioned in previous slide using appropriate label. So if you look at the previous command here, the GSK8 cap ICMD minus cert minus extract minus db dollar in comic server dot adb minus pw password minus label SSL underscore key store underscore label. This particular label, if I have multiple CA certificates, then there would be multiple certificates available in my key store and I'll have to execute this command with all those certificate names and so accordingly that in target I will create those multiple PM files. But how will I know the names of all certificates in my server's key store. So here by this command, I can list out names of all server certificates and CA certificates and use them in the command previous and generate all those PM files together. Once I have all those PM files together, I will have to concatenate them and create a single file of all those certificates. Now transfer the generated PM, PM file from server machine to client machine. Next thing is what I'll be doing is create the client key store using exported certificates in PM file. So with this command, I will be creating a key store for client. Now here, I will provide my C minus C name followed by a label. So for if I have multiple certificates in my .pem file, then I'll have to use minus C A name label one, minus C A name label two, minus C A label three, and so on for all those certificates to be included in my E store. Now, as my key store is created, now I'll have to protect it with password. So I will create a password file for it with on case dash command and give a new password for my converted key store.
Now let's see what is difference in connection manager skills to us. My connection manager is actually act, acting as a middleman between my database client and database server. And it's actually acting as client towards database server and acting as a server towards my database client. In 4.50 XT4W1, a standalone connection manager uses OpenSSL. But if connection manager is co-located within Chromix server, then it will still continue to use GSK. And in that case, e-store conversion is not required. Due to, due to its dual role, CM key store contains CA certificates needed to authenticate the database server that is for connection manager's client role. In that case, obtain such certificates and put them in the connection manager's key store as you would do for database client. Then it also contains its own certificate and corresponding private key that is for connection manager's role to authenticate itself towards database client. Obtain or create these as you would do for database server and put them into connection manager's key store. If connection manager's user certificate is self-signed, then get CN self-signed certificate and put it into database client's key store. If necessary, obtain additional CA certificates needed to authenticate connection manager and put them into the database client's key store, just as you would put the database server CA certificates in the database client's key store. Let's see what are the steps involved in creating new connection manager key store. Log on to the database server machine and extract certificate from server's PKCS 12 key store using the command below. If your server is using self-signed certificate only, then you will skip the CA search option. If the server's key store is a .kdb type or CMS type key store, then you need to use equivalent gskit command as given below. If your server CMS format key store contains additional CA certificates that were used to sign the server certificate, then again, you will have to extract all those certificates separately from server key store in separate .pem files and then create a single .pem file out of those PEM files and Use, use that PM file in later steps. For connection manager, it will need, you need to create a self-signed certificate for connection manager. So which you can create it with this OpenSSL command. Now, when you execute the, this command, it will ask you questions like country, state, locality, organization, organization unit, common name, email address, etc. Provide those details according to uh, what are your location, etc. Then you can combine 
the CA certificate from server as well as connection manager certificate generated in previous step. So here in the OpenSSL command at the top here is creating my cmcert.pem file, which is my connection manager's certificate file. Now create a key store for connection manager. So I will use this OpenSSL command to create a key store for connection manager in that I'm using that key created in the first OpenSSL command on this page. That is cmkey.pem and cmcert.pem. These two files I will use, provide it. I will provide it my certificate name, CA name for my connection manager and for my uh, DB server. Again, CM label provided here in this, the second open SSL command. Its value is the value which you have provided and common name in the post open SSL command on this page. Now, once your open SSL key store is created, you'll have to password protect it using on case stash command. So I will run on case stash command and provide a password for it and I'm done. Okay. Now with that, I'll open this session for questions. Okay. Um, this is Carlton again. Apparently, we made a mistake or I made a mistake in configuring the chat panel. Um, so if you've been trying to send your questions on the chat, um, it hasn't been active. Though I do see Leonard is asking what directories these files reside in. Um, what I'm going to do now is unmute everybody's um, phones. So if you have questions, you can ask them. I would ask you first to take just a minute to make sure that your phone itself is muted so we don't get a lot of background noise. Uh, if there is, I will um, mute everybody again and you'll have to choose the, or use the, the chat option and just send it to all panelists and, and we'll go from there. So with that, I'm going to unmute everyone. Okay, if you have any questions, please ask now. I don't know if that's a question, but if it is, you need to speak, you need to be closer to your phone. Okay, are there, are there any questions at all? It's Daniel from Germany. Um, just have a very short, as I missed the very first minutes of this session here. Is there any chance to get that uh, presentation um, sent to our email addresses? Um, yeah, hold on. Let me let me mute somebody's uh, somebody's got their phone has has got a TV or something going in the background. Hold on just a second. Um, Yes, uh, as you can see here, uh, there will be a session replay uh, hosted in the library at the IBM Informix community um, uh, website. Um, it will have a complete replay of, of this um, 
or a complete video of this presentation, and I've also asked to uh, get the presentation so I can convert it into PDF and include it there. Let me see, are there any other questions? There was one question uh, about where or what directory these files were located in. I assume uh, he was talking about the stash files and either the KDB or the P12 files. Uh, can you go ahead and, and answer that? So in case of client, these files can reside anywhere, but the key store file as well as the associated password files uh, should be in the same directory. It's a configurable, uh, where you are going to put it, it's a configurable parameter. So, and that configuration is, you can provide it through etc con SSL dot csg file. In that file, you mention the location of your key store as well as location of your password file. Okay, there is another question that asks if there is detailed and corrected documentation uh, on these on these features and uh, functionality available. Yes, the documentation is updated for uh, these features on the doc site. Okay. Um, so uh, just a second, let me see if I can find, and I will unmute each person individually. Uh, Greg, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you, and you can ask your question. Go ahead. I, I was just curious if there's any limitations on version numbers of the client SDK or the Informix server. We're currently running uh, version 12. 10 uh, on the server side and client, I think we're 4.7 and uh, with, uh, I think, version 11 of the IBM DB2 drivers. I'm not sure. I, did, I really uh, didn't get that question clearly. So you mean to say, is there any version specific uh, yeah, is, 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 will this work with version 12 of the server and uh, as far as using OpenSSL with the key stores? And also, uh, are there any client SDK limitations on version numbers? Uh, as far as 12.10 is concerned, uh, with 12.10, we, we are still going with uh, GSKit and for as far as open SSL, um, if you are using client SDK 450 FC4, then you will be able to uh, use open SSL with 1210. So it's, oh, okay. So it, it's really more the client side? Yes. Got it. But if, if we go to version 14, then we could use the open SSL on the server side. Is that correct? Uh, I haven't tried that yet, yet. Ideally, yes, you should be able to do it. But, okay. But I don't, I, I haven't not tested that. yet. Yeah, yeah not this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I cannot really say, yeah, it works. And okay, thank you so much. Okay, um, and I apologize if I mispronounce your name. Uh, Sarika, you're unmuted. You can ask your question. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, GSKit is delivered with uh, 1410 FC4 W1, uh, but not with CSDK. Uh, do you have any reason for this? Uh, and like, uh, 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 like in uh, we we have to say the customer to move to open SSL or uh, we'll have a GS kit available from the next releases. Yeah. So the GS kit 
um, would be the default um, SSL library from ESDK 250FC5 onwards. And customer would have option to switch to open SSL. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't see. Let me see. Daniel, did you have a question? I see that you you posted, or at least you clicked the question button. I'm going to unmute um, your phone. If you have a question, go ahead. I raised my I raised my question already. It was about the presentation file. Just okay. So okay. Um, that's that's answered. <laughs> okay. All I could see is just this little uh, marker in the participant panel. So I'll, sorry. Okay. Are there any other questions? Um, if there's something you'd like to ask, go ahead and, and just quote raise your hand in the in the chat box, and I'll unmute your phone. Um, okay, Sean Mo, hold on just a second. You're unmuted. Uh, hi, Carlton. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, sorry, I, I was having problems clicking buttons here. Um, so there was a question earlier about the server and uh, uh, the 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 uh, Informix server only includes GS Kit. There was a question about whether you could use OpenSSL on the server, and the server distribution only includes GS Kits. So so the model here is that the clients can use uh, OpenSSL to talk to the server, which uses GS Kit. So they're they're compatible, but on the server side, GS Kit is the only uh, the, the only encryption library that that's uh, supported. Well, now I'm a little confused because earlier in the presentation, the the comment was made that if you install the CSDK. Uh, co-located, let's say, in Informixter, that you could use um, SSL, but if you installed the CSDK in some other directory on the on the server that's hosting the instance, um, you know, you would have to go through the conversion process to change your um, your KDB fee, your KDB files to .p12 files and so forth. So can you kind of yeah. explain what's going on there? Well, that, that, that's on the client side. So, so you know, you, you have two components. You have encryption library for, that supports the client, the client, and you have encryption library that supports the server. So on the client, OpenSSL is an option, and on the server, GSKit is the only option. So you're saying that SSL, oh, it's SSL through the GS kit, or SSL is just not available on the sir on the instance side. The well, I, I mean, we don't have to. Get, there, the implementation of GS kit does leverage Open SSL, but that's not that's not really germane. Um, I, I mean, it's a standalone installation of GS kit. And so, um, you know, we don't, we don't, we, we, we call the, you know, the encryption library on the server is, is GS Kit, but they're, they're compatible. And what we're, you know, so the, the, the encryption, the, the conversion of the, of the encryption keys and the stash file is needed on the client side to move from GS Kit style artifacts to OpenSSL style artifacts. Okay. Let me let me take this offline and and uh, ponder it for a minute and make sure I understand. Uh, looks like Greg has another question, so I'm going to mute you, Sean. And Greg, you're unmuted again. To clarify, is this supported the OpenSSL uh, connections with the uh, IBM DB2 driver? Or is it just a CSDK uh, implementation at this point? Currently, I can say that this is only CSDK, and we really don't know about DB2 right now because we are in 
not really aware of what is going on in DB2 side. Well, so, so there's a there's a DB2 driver that we use to connect to our Informix database uh, on the client side as well as the CSDK. So that that's why I'm asking. So uh, we we have two different ways of connecting our clients. Are you saying the DRDA client? Correct, the DRDA client. Let me unmute Sean here in just a second. Sean, are you familiar, familiar? Does this work with the DRDA client, or is it just no. our own CSDK? Yeah, it's just our own CSDK, Carlton. The the um, the the common client, the the, the DB2 clients are 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 using GSKit exclusively. Yeah, as far as I know, yes. Okay. Okay. Help? Thank you for the clarification. Okay. Are there any other questions? If not, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.